search page and notice on the Long Hills High School website, or on the back of your program, there is a small QR code. QR code in the corner that can be scanned for more information. Thank you.
Hello, hello, and good evening. My name is Karna Gajar, and I am a, um, I'm a trombonist in, the, in both the Molotov's Wind Ensemble and in the newly formed Spy Eaters. My colleagues include Talasta Gajar, Jonathan Moody, and Ben Friedemeyer. Tonight, we want to introduce to you our beautiful selection of Song for Japan by Stephen Verhelst. This piece was written to honor the trying times that East Japan faced in the devastating Tohoku earthquake and tsunami event on March 11, 2011. Despite the unfortunate loss of more than 27,000 people in countless towns and villages, Japan's hope for rebuilding a prosperous land continued, and in time, they fortunately did so. This piece celebrates the success and optimism that Japanese citizens embraced in order to rebuild their country. You will hear exposed souls as well as tonalities shifting from major to minor throughout this piece, and which will show Japan's rise from despair. The contouring of the dynamics will also help guide you through the time starting from the tsunami all the way to the successful rebuilding of their home. In addition, we would like to acknowledge our band directors, Mr. Canner and Mr. Peoples, for allowing us to succeed in this wonderful project of ours. They have shown us immense support by allowing us to stay after school and let us achieve what we have um, been trying to do. Thank you for all of you, and we hope you enjoy this delightfully subtle piece, A Song for Japan.
ensemble portion of the concert and it will take just a couple minutes to get them up on stage let them play a couple notes and then we'll be ready to go so we'll turn the house lights on for just a moment while we do that Thank you. 
on what is undoubtedly a, uh, a special night for a number of reasons, um, but we're so glad that you came out tonight. Obviously, some of you are sort of compelled to be out here because of the nature of your relationship with some of the people on the stage, but uh, regardless, we hope that this will be a very uh, a musically fulfilling night, a night when you can uh, be proud of what your students are capable of and the teamwork that they put together to make a, a result that you're going to hear tonight, which I think is very good and also a night to celebrate a wonderful, wonderful student. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, we're gonna open tonight, uh, the wind ensembles portion, with a tune called Melodious Thunk. Um, have any of you, are any of you familiar with a term called a spoonerism? A spoonerism is like, if your name was uh, Kelly, uh, that doesn't work, I was gonna say Kelly Cantor, and that turns into Kelly Cantor. Uh, like my wife's name is Leslie Dragan, so she'd be Desley Reagan or something like that. So it's, it's alternating the first word of each one, uh, of, of your first name and last name to create something new. Um, Melodious Thunk is sort of a play on that. On one of America's great jazz musicians named Thelonious Monk. Uh, Thelonious Monk was one of the three pillars of the introduction of what's called the bebop era of jazz, along with Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker. Um, Thelonious Monk was absolutely brilliant. If you're interested in his music, which I think is stunning, um, there's lots of great stuff to find online, including some really fascinating documentaries. This piece was written in sort of, not necessarily capturing all of Thelonious Monk, 
but sort of capturing the feel. It does have a couple of quotes from one of the most popular bebop tunes ever called Salt Peanuts. So you're going to hear a, a little motive that goes bop beat up, bop beat up. You're going to hear that. So these are just little in, impressions of the bebop era in a jazz, uh, in a, so a jazz idiom in a concert band setting. So I want to give you a little bit of an understanding of what this tune is. It's quite short, and I think you're going to like it. This is called Melodious Thunk. Thank <laughs> you. 
Can everybody hear me okay out there? Excellent. I think most of you know me, but my name is Richard Canner, and I'm fortunate to be one of our fan directors here at Walnut Hills. Our next piece tonight is uh, really special in particular tonight. It's entitled One Life Beautiful. Composer Julie Giroux writes about her piece. The title One Life Beautiful is a double entendre, which in one sense is referring to one life beautifully lived. The other sense is a direct observation concluding that having only one life is what makes life so sacred, tragic, and so very precious. This is an impressionistic work musically describing that condition. Shakespeare's sweet sorrow, the frailty and strength of life, the meaning of what it is to truly live one life beautiful. None of us know what tomorrow holds, and this year we've learned even more to cherish every moment we have with one another. We will be dedicating our performance of One Life Beautiful tonight to our beloved student and friend, Grant Lutke. We have a few students that are gonna say some words about Grant. Hello, hello, my name is Joshua Shaw, and some words that we used to describe him by fellow band members were funny, always smiling, energetic, loving, kind, helpful, goofy, and hilarious. And I knew him from my uh, first year at Warner in seventh grade, and I had some classes with him, and I didn't know him at first. He was just a goofy kid who would always just mess around. And I started eating lunch with him one day, and I found out he was more than that. And so some memories that I shared with him is that he'd call me and we just always like talk about random things, mostly sports. He loved F1, which I found out about, and he loved Lando Norris. I loved Max Verstappen, if anyone knows him. And I'd always make fun of him because he liked the Packers and I don't like the Packers. I like the Bengals. But, and then one of my favorite memories of him was in seventh grade, he convinced my science teacher to spend the day watching a Vets game. And we did nothing in class. <laughs> and then I tried to convince him to play water polo with me. He said no. I tried again. He said no. And so we did much of together. And I will always be thankful for that because he helped me pass the time. We'd always play games, we'd mess around. The one thing I'm glad is that I actually, that is, is that he'd always mess around with me and especially at night when we were coming home from competitions, he'd always, I'd always try to sleep because I was tired and he'd always be talking in the back of the bus, keeping me awake. <laughs> but I will miss him because he was one of my first friends I wanted and I'm always going to be grateful for that. Hi, I'm Jacob Shelf, and my to describe him is outgoing, bouncy, silly, high energy, talented, and positive. I knew him from seventh grade also from my English class. And the first two things I remember him telling me is that you're supposed to eat mac and cheese with a fork, which I never do, and that his birthday was on April Fool's Day which also makes sense with his personality. <laughs> this year I gotta be around him all with him being in my math class and me sitting right next to him and then also doing much more with him. He was a wonderful person and an amazing person to hang out with, but then if you really know him, you knew he could get annoying real fast depending on how much he had to talk. A good story that shows his personality is when we were coming home on a bus from marching band once, he was goofing around and he was like throwing his shoe. And so he threw it and he ended up not knowing where it went. So he thought it was out the window until we got home. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Ilsa Berger. I only knew Grant during his uh, first marching band year. And 
even though that was a short amount of time, it didn't take long for him to make a good impression. Uh, Grant always had a smile on his face. He, his positive spirit was always contagious and it would light up a room instantly. He would always find the joy and humor in any situation, whether it be long hot drills outside or a indoor music rehearsal after a long hard day of school. He worked really hard, but simultaneously managed to never take anything too, too seriously, which I would say is a lesson that a lot of us could learn from. Um, Grant always made us laugh, and he was quick to keep up spirits and offer what he commented at any time. He had the ability to march of his own, to march the beat of his own drum, and also have fun anytime, anywhere. One of my favorite moments that I had with him uh, was after a football game. I remember that because there were a few um, visiting seniors that passed by. We were just sitting in lot D, it was really dark. We just had a conversation and I remember talking about who we wanted to be, what we thought others thought of us, whether or not we cared. I remember that we, uh, one of the seniors came by and gave us cookies and we just kind of sat there and talked about life. And I was really glad I had the chance to have that conversation with him because that was one of the only long ones I was able to have. Thank you. I'm Maddox. I got to know Grant also from marching band and I'm glad I got to meet him. He's an amazing person. He was always making us laugh and being funny. And I didn't really get to know him until later in the season, which I regret. But he was a great friend. I was always able to talk to him and joke with him, even if I saw him in the hallways or like in the band room, in the locker room at the end of the day. Um, he was just always fun to be around, even if he did get a little silly and goofy sometimes when he should have been. But he always showed school spirit. He would always dress up very interesting outfits. He wore a cheese head to school one day, which was interesting. He wore a like toucan one day. I don't know where he got that from or whose that was. Um, he wore a Bobby Boucher Waterboy jersey one time. I don't even know where he would get that. Um, but he just always tried to make people laugh, and I really appreciate that about him. And that's something that I feel like a lot of people can look up to. Um, I'd say one, one memory that I always think of about him is there was a set in the marching band show where we had to wait for the other sections to like get their drill down or whatever. And he would like, he would roll back onto his back and just fart. And it was just, I don't know why he kept doing that, but it was really funny. And even though it was worth the time, I wish I could just laugh a little about that one more time. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go Taylor Heineke, you'll go to the Lagos. Hey guys, I was thinking about uh, this performance tonight uh, a lot over the last couple weeks. And I was thinking, you know, as a music educator, I feel if we're doing things right, we're not just teaching music, we're teaching about life more than music. And we certainly hope to instill love of music in our students. We hope that students find solace and find a place to you know, get away from the rigor of their other classes and, and find a place where they can you know, belong and, and have fun, make music. But we know the reality is that most students are not gonna go on and pursue a career in music. They're not gonna perform maybe even beyond high school. We hope they do, um, but that doesn't always happen. Above everything, the experiences and life lessons that the students have in our program, along with the friendships and memories they make, especially through marching band, can be special and sometimes even life-changing. And so I wanted to share a little bit about Grant's story in regard to marching band. At first, Grant wasn't sure about signing up for marching band. I think he just signed up so he could go to Disney World. And uh, he even considered very strongly dropping out, and we convinced him it was too late to do that. And a little help from, uh, you know, his mom, uh, we, uh, we convinced him to stick it out. So... He did, and I'm so glad he did, because when he stuck it out, I know that Grant ended up loving his experience in marching band, he found more of his people, he met great new friends, and we all got to know him better, like you can see from, from these comments. 
we got to see Grant shine in a new way through marching band. And uh, I think that I know that the goofiness and the, the charisma that Grant brought to marching band made us all better. It just did. I'd like to personally thank everyone that made donations to the marching band in memory of Grant. Uh, the outpouring of love and support was overwhelming, and it continues to be overwhelming. I'm pleased to announce tonight that beginning this spring, the Walnut Hills Alumni Foundation will begin offering an annual Grant Lubke Memorial Scholarship for a graduating senior who's participated in marching band and or theater during high school. We hope the scholarship will help keep Grant's memory and spirit alive for many, many years. Grant's family is here tonight, and many more of his friends and extended family are watching online. We want to thank you so much for sharing your wonderful child with us and let you know that we continue to hold you close to our heart and in our thoughts. Grant, we all wish we had so much more time with you, yet we can rest in the knowledge that we're better for having known you, and you taught us how to live joyfully, how to live beautifully. So tonight, Grant, we dedicate One Life Beautiful to you. We love you and miss you, buddy.
Now we're going to have a little bit of fun here, and uh, you may feel like doing a waltz in a minute. So if you start standing up and waltzing, you don't know why you're doing it. It's Ben Friedemeyer, Ben Friedemeyer's fault. So anyway, all right. So this next piece, "Beautiful Colorado," we're going to feature our senior all-state euphonium player, Ben Friedemeyer. He's going to come out and play this for you. He is a, a super talented musician. As you saw before, he was out here with Jonathan Moody playing piano from memory, by the way, too, which is crazy, because he just learned that in the last two weeks. And he's gonna come out and play this uh, euphonium concerto for you as well. Um, when he played this a solo and ensemble last year, the judge, I believe, just put down their pencil and just jawed at the floor and enjoyed hearing him play. So I'm excited for him to play with the ensemble tonight. Let's welcome Ben Kretemeyer to the stage.
How about another hand for Ben Friedman? No. So our last piece is different. And if you know me, I like to program stuff that's very, very different, goes all over the place. So we've, we've done a, a wide variety of music here, everything from, you know, melodious thunk all the way to this one. And this one is about uh, Pompeii and Mount Vesuvius. And if you notice, there's um, some billboards around town about the Pompeii exhibit. That just happens to be well-timed. We didn't think about that. But I guess this could be a commercial for that. So go check out the Pompeii exhibit. Yeah, there you go. So this next piece is by Frank Tichelli. It's about, obviously, a volcanic eruption. And uh, it's um, sort of programmatic. So it could be a little scary for you. I don't know. And then the middle of the piece I really like because it seems like there's a little bit of hope, but then it erupts again. <laughs> and then the, then the piece ends uh, in a, a, just a complete blaze of glory. It's, it's lots and lots of fun and a, a chance for us to, uh, you know, well, play loud. So anyway, we, we hope you enjoyed our last piece tonight. Uh, this is properly titled Vesuvius. Thank you. 
Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great evening.